Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be seeing what happens if we upgrade directly from Windows 7 to Windows 11. Microsoft says you need to be on a certain version of Windows 10 to upgrade to Windows 11. I believe that version is 2004 or 20H1. However, obviously, Windows 7 is much older than that, so we're going to be seeing if we can actually perform a successful upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 11 with, by skipping Windows 8 and Windows 10. Because that is a Microsoft recommended thing, I'm going to assume that the default ISO, which is the one that I downloaded straight from Microsoft's website, I'm just going to assume that this is not going to work. It's going to say that the system is not compatible or anything like that. So to bypass those things, we are going to use a custom ISO. All it is is a Windows 10 ISO with the Windows 11 install.wim. I've used this ISO for multiple in place Windows 11 upgrades and installations on unsupported machines and it works fine. As we can see here, install.wim September 13th and the rest are April 9th. So this is going to work and I have done other upgrades with it before, however not on Windows 7. So it'll be interesting to see if we can go from Windows 7 which was in 2009 straight to Windows 11 in 2021. Back here in Windows 7, our installer still has not opened for the regular vanilla Windows 11 ISO. So we are just going to have to, oh, here we go. It is finally deciding to load up. I am actually surprised that we made it this far. I don't, I didn't think that this would even launch, but hey, um, we're gonna go ahead and try it. I don't think this machine even meets the recommendations. I don't think TPM is enabled. Yeah, there is no TPM in this virtual machine. So I don't think this is actually going to work, but we'll let it try. We'll let it try to install. I just want to see if there's an incompatible operating system error that shows up because I think there will be. This is where I think we're going to get hung up. It is currently checking our PC to make sure that we're compatible. It's been stuck on this screen for quite some time now, so I really don't think that our Windows 7 system is going to be compatible with the vanilla Windows 11 setup. So just so we don't waste any more time because I don't, it's not going to work anyway because we don't have any TPM, we're just going to switch straight into the unsupported ISO. And here is the unsupported ISO. It is much larger than the default Windows 11 ISO, coming in at 5.28 gigabytes instead of I think the other one was 4.4 something. So let's go ahead and run this. And the first thing that we're going to notice whenever it decides to open is that it actually says it is the Windows 10 installer because it is. It is the Windows 10 installer that is simply installing Windows 11 from that existing install.wim. So let's let this load. Uh, we are still actually waiting for the old one to close, but we are able to tell the difference because this one says Windows 11 and the other one will say Windows 10. Like I said, it is the legacy Windows 10 logo because this is the executable from the Windows 10 installer, except just like I said, with the Windows 11 installation files. And once again, we can see the presence of the Windows 10 installer with the Windows 10 setup title bar and install Windows 10. But I promise you at the end, it will say install Windows 11. By using this way, it bypasses all of the restrictions imposed by the Windows 11 vanilla installer. And since this version of Windows 7 is not activated, we have to activate it ourselves. Since I'm not going to activate a virtual machine with a real product key, I'm just going to take one from the Microsoft Documents copy it and put it in and it works and we can go ahead and accept and this is a little odd we cannot keep our personal files and apps we can only keep our personal files so just for that I'm gonna just make a few files on the desktop just to make sure that they do get kept and here are the new files we just made that will hopefully stay on our desktop when we upgrade I know I spelled them wrong I just typed random letters Let's go ahead with that. Uh, it's a little disappointing we won't be able to keep our programs because, I don't know, maybe it would be different. Maybe it would be cool to see, I don't know, the Games Explorer on Windows 11. And finally, after a ton of time, we are now ready to install Windows 11 Pro, like I said, and keep personal files, but not apps. But there are no apps on this machine. So let's go ahead and click Install. Once again, it does say installing Windows 10, but it is installing Windows 11, I can promise you that. So let's just wait until this is done installing. And it appears like we do have a login screen for Windows 11, um, and everything is working so far. 
it looks like the graphics drivers in VMware Tools have been uninstalled. However, I think that's understandable because we did not choose any apps, and I think it treats VMware Tools as an app more than a driver. But I mean, I'm honestly kind of surprised because I have seen failed Windows 11 upgrades from Windows 10 to 11, where it has the 10 lock screen and the 11 desktop, but the file explorer is still from Windows 10, and it was just a huge mess. So I'm kind of surprised that this upgrade didn't get corrupted, well at least yet. Um, I'd be interested to see what kind of stayed from Windows 7 when we upgraded to Windows 11. But the first thing we have to do is get VMware tools installed, or actually we have to agree to the Windows terms. And alright, let's get VMware tools installed. And here we are inside of our upgraded Windows 7 to 11. And nothing really looks different. I'm honestly kind of surprised. I mean, nothing weird has happened here. This is the updated file explorer. All of our files that we created in Windows 7 are still here. Um, even our empty text document. Um, no apps have been copied over like we kind of expected that. I don't remember actually seeing that in Windows 11. I don't remember ever seeing that. This is the private character editor. Yeah, I do not have that on my main machine, and I have never seen that, so that must be something that was kept over. But we, of course, did get all of the Windows 11 bloatware, um, which I'm not too surprised about, because why wouldn't they put bloatware? Um, but other than that, I mean, it still reports as Windows 11, and I'm sure, let me see if we can still get updates, because this is not an up-to-date version. Yep, there are still updates available for this virtual machine and so there's actually one more thing I wanted to see we should have had a windows.old folder yep windows.old windows.old here and yeah 2009 so these are our windows 7 files can we roll back um, using that rollback feature and it does identify if this version isn't working try going back to windows 7 so let's click go back, and the files we need to take you back were removed from this PC, even though the windows.old folder is right here. So we cannot roll back to Windows 7, even though we do have the files. This was an interesting experiment. I mean, oh, that is weird. Okay, that is a little bit weird. I think I remember reading about this somewhere in an update, but if we right-click, this is a smaller context menu, than right clicking here. I think I did read about that somewhere, um, but that is one, that is the only change that I notice from here to here. And also the show more options is hidden, so that might be a little bit of a glitch, but it doesn't appear anywhere else, like if I just open the legacy app, right clicking, show more options is still there. So this does seem like for the most part a relatively successful upgrade and I really don't see any problems with it. And so with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.